Shalom Aleichem, everyone. Assalamu Alaikum. This is a response to Asher Mez's video, Is Islam Avodah Zara, or Idolatry? Before moving on, I want to point out what my video is about and what it is not about. I am not making an anti-Asher Meza video, like some of the others I've seen on YouTube. In fact, I like the rabbi and believe he poses challenging questions regarding Orthodox Judaism. Obviously, I disagree with his Islam video and found that his arguments and use of sources were lacking. I'm actually surprised that no Orthodox Jew has responded to him already because I don't think he presents Orthodoxy in an accurate manner. Asher doesn't say much about Islam or quote any Islamic sources, and this hurts his argument. How can you tell us a religion is idolatry without telling us what that religion says? I will only go over the interesting things Asher says about Islam, as far as that is concerned. That being said, my goal is not to refute Asher, but to provide perspective on the things he talks about. Today's topic is very, very important. Today, friends, I'm going to show you why the religion known as Islam falls under the rubric for what is considered idolatry, Abu Dazara, according to Halakha. Islam falls in the rubric of idolatry. Avodazara, according to Meza. Meza is saying that there is a category referred to as Avodazara, which the rabbis say is a rubric for idolatry. Let's remember what he said for the latter part of this video. Jewish law. And I'm also going to explain why many felt that it wasn't idolatry or idolatrous, starting predominantly with the Rambam and why he and others who ruled in that manner. Why did the vast majority of rabbis from the early days until present times consider Islam not to be idolatry. This video fails to tell us why Asher believes the rabbinical consensus is mistaken. He also fails to give Maimonides' own reasons for why he considered Islam to be monotheistic. How can you make an argument against a majority view unless you know what exactly that argument is? did so. And friends, before I explain my thesis, I want to let you know that I consider myself a traditional halachic orthodox Traditional orthodox Jew? Hardly, because you want to dismiss centuries of scholarship in order to go back to the Rambam. If I can consider your position to be orthodox, then I can consider Martin Luther to be a traditional Catholic. The extremist mentality I perceive also reminds me of the Wahhabi ideology of Islam. To begin, friends, one traditional error made on deciding whether a belief system is or is not a form of idolatry is on whether or not that belief system worships only one God. In other Asher thinks it's a traditional error to classify idolatry according to the number of gods a belief system has. A traditional error according to who? Which rabbis have pointed this out? Why would a traditional Jew go to someone who speaks against tradition to get a traditional answer? A traditional Orthodox person would not make a statement like this. A traditional scholar who reads Rambam and finds a perceived error would do everything possible to reconcile that error with other authorities. Saying Rambam was wrong is a very last resort for someone of the Orthodox mindset. But Asher Meza does the opposite and points out things he calls errors in the Rambam without doing everything possible to save face. Idolatrous. For example, Zoroastrianism is monotheistic, but it's still considered idolatry, Abu Dazara, according to Halakha. Or Arkhanatan's belief system, which is also monotheistic, and is still considered Abu That's interesting. I wonder what sources he used for the, that claim. Meza is shooting himself and his Judaism in the foot here. Why? Let's see what the Jewish Encyclopedia has to say on Zoroastrianism. The point of resemblance between Zoroastrianism and Judaism, and hence also between the former and Christianity, are many and striking. Most scholars, Jewish as well as non-Jewish, are of the opinion that Judaism was strongly influenced by Zoroastrianism and views related to angiology and demonology, and probably also the doctrine of resurrection. 
as well as all the eschatological ideas in general, and also that monotheistic conception of Yahweh. Zoroastrians also believe in a devil figure, Ahrahman, and a savior, Seoshant, who will come and redeem mankind, as in the Mashiach. The Talmud itself is also filled with spells and incantations, by the way, of Persian origin. Also note the Zohar's references to angels and demons. Many academics believe that Zoroastrianism influenced Judaism, and so to say that the Zoroastrians are idolaters implies that Judaism is influenced by Avodah Zarah. When Israel was worshipping the golden calf as the one God who brought them out of Egypt, and this, we know Hazal clearly con Israel worshipped the golden calf as the one God who brought them out of Egypt? Something is wrong here. Let us turn to Exodus 32, 7 in Hebrew. Ele Elohecha Israel Asher Ha Eloka Maitz Eretz Metzraim. I circled the pronoun Ele, which means these in Hebrew. The verse is referring to a multiple number of gods that Israel made for themselves. The word after it, Elohaka, meaning gods, is also plural. Asher seems to think that the Jews forgot about God when they worshipped the golden calf. In actuality, the Israelites threw God so far above them that they created intermediaries for themselves, like the golden calves here. And you know what? The Ritva's Pasak shares the same sentiment. It states, let it be known that the faith of the Muslims, even though they unify God, is considered complete Avodah Zarah. The, the Ritva. Why would anyone rely on an authority that lived at a time and place where knowledge of Islam was lacking? Meza will quote a host of rabbis from Spain whose knowledge about Islam was poor. If Meza could find a rabbinical source of accurate knowledge of Islam, he can make a better argument. Asher is quoting the Ritva selectively. He is deliberately ignoring the sources that go against his argument that Islam is idol worship. He doesn't even uh, provide the reference of this quote, which is Pesachim 25b. A good rabbi would provide sources for everything the Ritva had to say about Islam in order to give an accurate picture of his views. Now for some references. In his commentary on the Talmud, the Ritva states that the Ishmaelites do not worship idolatry. They cannot abolish it. Here's another quote from the Ritva. But regarding the Ishmaelites, they are not idol worshippers at all. Their touch of wine is permitted. You don't have to be sharp to realize this statement from the Ritva is problematic because Ritva clearly says at the beginning that Muslims unify God. Then we see that ancient rabbi saying that Islam is not composed of idolatry. Is the Ritva contradicting himself? The Ritva is arguing that Islam is Avodah Zarah because Muslims deny the Torah of Moses, that it is not true. And anything similar to this belief, denial of the Torah, is Avodah Zarah. Now I have a question from my Orthodox friends that may spark some controversy, but will honor the memory of the Rambam, I think. Why is the Ritva classifying the denial of Torah as Avodah Zarah? Everyone knows the 13 principles of faith. Did not Rambam say in Mishnah Torah that de denial of Torah is heresy? This is found in Teshuvah sections of Mishnah Torah. It's common knowledge that Rambam said the denial of any of his 13 principles is kefira. Asher himself will unwillingly provide us the answer in this video. Here is the surprise I was talking about. The Rav Slevichik talking about the possibility of a Jew converting to Islam. That Sternbuck quote also says the same thing and they are both following the Ritva in this regard. The Rav here says that Rambam himself associated denial of Torah with Avodah Zarah. Is that true? Is the Rambam being inconsistent? Let us go to the source of that quote from Asher. If you open the same perek at the end of the section not quoted by Asher, the Rambam says that denial of prophecy is heresy. Now in the next perek, Rambam says that anyone 
who acknowledges a false god denies the entire Torah in its totality. And then anyone who denies the worship of false gods acknowledges the entire Torah in its totality. This is all found in the first chapter of Avodah Zarah, where Rambam introduces the ideology behind Avodah Zarah. Here is the problem. The rabbis who read Rambam, such as the Ritva and the Brisker Rav, made a logical fallacy. Rambam is making a simple statement that worshipping idols is the same as denying Torah. But does Rambam say the opposite holds true? Denying the Torah means you are worshipping idols? No. Rambam never said that, and he would be inconsistent and in contradicting himself if he was because he Rambam already said here in Avodah Kochavim and there in Teshuvah that Torah denial is heretical. He never said anywhere that Torah denial was also Avodah Zara. The rabbis either made a logical mistake because they were fallible people or they had a bad translation of the Rambam which was historically the case. I can imagine someone arguing also that because Rambam made this statement in Avodah Kochavim, he must be equating Torah denial with Avodah Zarah. The problem is that location does not provide any context to the clear argument Rambam is making. That is like arguing a Polish man visited Germany and now becomes a German man. The Mishnah Torah is a big summary of a huge volume of books and I'm sure you will find a lot of places where Rambam will make statements about one thing that don't reflect the subject matter of the other. Denial of the Torah is considered a big heresy, and this was also the Rambam's view. However, Rambam and most rabbis would not consider this type of heresy specifically to be Avodah Zarah. It appears that the Ritva may be making the assertion that Islam is Avodah Zarah in the context of Jews converted to Islam and not necessarily talking about Islam in its essence. Also it is noted that Muslims believe in the Torah and that it was a revelation from God given to Moses. Regardless, the fact is that Ritva is unable to defend himself and Rit Ritva's views on Islam are mishandled in this video. Denial of the Torah is considered a big heresy, and this was also the Rambam's view. However, Rambam and most rabbis would not consider this type of heresy specifically to be Avodah Zarah. It appears that the Ritva may be making the assertion that Islam is Avodah Zarah in the context of Jews converted to Islam and not necessarily talking about Islam in its essence. Also, it is noted that Muslims believe in the Torah and that it was a revelation from God given to Moses. Regardless, the fact is that Ritva is unable to defend himself and Rit Ritva's views on Islam are mishandled in this video. In this slide, Asher Meza quotes Rabbi Joe Teitelbaum of Blessed Memory. Joe Teitelbaum was the Rebbe of Satmar and is well known for his staunch anti-Zionist views. I was astonished that the Satmar Rebbe would say this, so I decided to check the source myself. Here is the book, al Hegula, from which Meza quoted. This book is available on the internet, but in Hebrew. The passage from which Meza quotes is found on page 7. Asher Meza never, never bothered to cite the page number, probably because he did not read it. Maybe he knew someone else that had. The actual quote is circled in red for viewers to verify for themselves. Here's what a better translation says. The conquest of the old city and the places of the temple which are now full of idols. A Satmar student of the Rebbe was nice enough to answer my email and explain what the Rebbe meant by idols. Gil Gil Gilwin. According to him, the Rebbe may have used idols as a term for Islam. He also explained that converting to Islam would be considered kefra, a term meaning denier, but not in the category of Avodah Zarah. The Hasid also noted 
the Rebbe denied that Islam was a form of idolatry. The Rebbe wrote in his well-known book, Voyel Moshi, that Muslims do not engage in Avodah Zarah, and that they believe in the oneness of God. So, the Rebbe was referring to all of Jerusalem, and not just the base Hamikdash here. He doesn't use the term Pir Avodah Zarah either. As someone only knew the Satmar Rebbe's opinion from this video, uh, they would really not know the Satmar's opinions, views on this subject. 